once. I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> Melissa, thank you so much for being here today. Uh, Thanks I, for having me once again. Yeah, I know I say it all the time, but you're, you're always a great guest. And uh, aside from that, today is something that's really important, I think, to a lot of folks that are watching, and uh, I'm glad you're here. So, first of all, tell me, uh, you know, for those who have not seen one of our, our shows before, tell me, ex I, what, exactly, I can't imagine that we're not, like, global, nationwide, know, right? stage, whoa. Um, tell me who you are and what your title is, and tell me what you do for V. Sure. My name is Melissa Palmer. I am a senior technologist in the product strategy team here at Veeam. Do a lot of different things. I do lots of webinars, lots of customer meetings, lots of demos. Um, and generally, my job is to kind of evangelize our products and get the word out on the street about how awesome everything we do here at Veeam is. Cool. And, and that's the truth. It is. It's it's be amazing. Be amazing, yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so... Do you have a special place that you go to study? A room? Uh, do you hide away somewhere? Do you go outside of the garage? Do you go to the smoker? What do you what do? What kind of people have you been in, uh, interviewing here? Uh, honestly, oh, you have no idea. What do you? What do you? <laughs> you have no uh, I idea. I either study at my desk I work at right here, or sometimes <laughs> if it's at night I'll take my laptop and some books and go sit on the couch and study. Cool. But uh, generally, mostly at the desk, I would say. Okay. But, uh, gotcha. here's, my, here's my secret, right? I like notebooks and pens and paper. So I like to be able to yeah. write things down and stuff like that. So most of the desk, sometimes I kick back on the couch a little bit. Gotcha. Well, I mean, that brings you to my next question. What what kind of learner are you? Obviously, I, I know yeah. you from a, a pen and paper kind of gal. You know, is that what you are you flashcards? Do you just I do like flashcards too? So it depends on what I'm studying, right? If it's more theory stuff, I'm all about reading, taking notes, um, doing more research on a topic to get a better understanding of it. Absolutely flashcards. There's this thing out there called Quizlet, if you haven't heard of it. It's online flashcards and they have a phone app too. So you can make your flashcards, put them on your phone, just like flip through them when you have a couple minutes. So it's really helpful. Um cool. and uh for that's for theory stuff and then if it comes, it's more like a technical thing. I'm more of a learn by doing type person. So I am the queen of RTFM, believe it or not. I will just go sit there with, you know, the Veeam backup and replication documentation and go through and configure things and, you know, do it myself. Like I'm, I don't, we're making a video, right? But I don't like to learn from videos and from what yeah. I get. I am very strange in this day and age. I don't want to just sit and watch a video to learn something. Something like this I like, right? But to sit there and be right. like, I'm going to learn how to configure vSphere from a video. Uh, not my favorite thing to do. I'd rather just go fumble through it myself a couple times. Gotcha. What do you think about uh, the test guides? In other words, uh, like here's the, the study guide for Veeam 2020 yeah. or VMware, VCP. You know, it depends on the guide. So what I like better than a study guide is the exam blueprint or exam guide. And that's a document you get from whatever certification you're taking. And they basically tell you what's exactly in the test from that, right? And from that, I use that as my starting place and I go out from there. And I'm one of those people, I like to do a lot of my own research to fill in the gaps, but I will absolutely use a couple of different guides, right? I don't believe in a single source of anything. So yeah. like if I'm studying vSphere, I might look at the official guide. I might look some un like unofficial ones. Um, Veeam actually publishes some amazing unofficial study guides for the VMware certified um, professional exam, right? Yeah. So VCPs, anybody out there doing that, we have some great guides that we make here at Veeam with community experts. Um, so I like to get my stuff from a bunch of different sources and I'll ping people, I'll read reviews. I'll be like, Hey, has anybody mm -hmm. bought this book? Is it any good? Or people will say to me, Oh, you know, you're going for this or this is, these are the books you need to get. So I like to kind of ask around, use a couple different sources. No, it, it brings a, a perfect point to the, you know, the very first time I started really communicating with you right before I set to take my VCP, I was like, who at Veeam knows VMware? And they went, call Melissa. And I was like, hey, uh, you mean? don't really know who the hell I am, but, <laughs> you know. So, uh, yeah, I kind of have this reputation of being the uh, VMware person, right? And that's, that's a yeah. whole other dichotomy that we should talk about, learning new things via exams as well, because yeah, that's, that's a whole thing too, right? Yeah, what are, you, what are your thoughts, and, and I know I know, what are your thoughts on labs? Do you need a hands-on lab to pass an exam? It depends, right? There's so many different forms of labs out there, right? Uh, if you're talking about VMware specifically, 
Oh, VMware, yay. Yeah. Um, VMware actually has something called hands-on labs where you can go spin up a number of pre-configured labs complete with lab guides and do it, right? If you're more of a Cisco person, there's tons of Cisco wrap rentals out there. Like you can rent a configured uh, thing for um, like kind of CCIE activities and stuff like that. Right. And a lot of them have mm -hmm. lab guides, right? Um, mm -hmm. I am, oh God, I have to admit this, I use a lot of dirty nested VCR stuff just because I don't have a lot of hardware. Right? I, got made, I got made fun of this the other day. Somebody like was like, well, uh, your dirty lab over there. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. I had a, a Mac Pro with like 24 gigs of RAM that I just ran everything right. that I needed to on, right? Um, the Nooks are another big thing. Mac Minis are another big thing. So you can do a lot with virtualization um, to run a lab too. But I don't think everybody needs to go out there and have racks and racks of hardware mm -hmm. in their basement, right? There's ways around that now. Well, I can't really port my camera over to the five. I know you've got a couple of them. Yeah, right? I was gonna say, to the uh, to the five uh, Raspberry oh, Pis that five, I have. Five, but they're gonna say five nooks. So I'm like, oh. No, no, no. Five. I've got I've got four of those, but I've got five Raspberry Pis over there. I'm jealous. And they're running the new fling on them. And let me tell you, if you've never had the ability to do that, build a cluster, do all those kinds of things using the ARM, you know. Uh, yeah, that's a great way to do it too, yeah. ARM stuff. Or you could be filthy like me and do it all nested in vSphere, um, VMware Workstation, VMware Fusion, whatever, and that stuff. There's yeah. lots of different ways to get it done. Virtual box is free. Right? Yeah, that's another true. option. Yeah. yeah, true. Cool. Okay. Well, good. Now, uh, a couple other things too, just real quick. And, and again, Melissa, I, I'm, I'm conscious of your time and I appreciate you doing this more than you know. And everyone who's listened to the other five people uh, that we've I'm not sure where I'm going to plug Melissa into our little adventure here, um, but you know everyone has got a little bit different style about how they've done things. So one of the things that I did for everyone who's been on is I want you to tell me about some other resources. Tell me about VMS. Tell me what. Yes, right. Is. Yeah. So as much as I don't like videos, um, I have been making an. I'm going to let you share that. Though. I'm going to give you the screen. Okay. I don't have anything to share now. I'll just talk. I don't have anything to share. Okay, cool. Um, that sounds good. Uh, I have a YouTube channel where I've actually started putting uh, videos on Veeam, VMware, and yeah, mostly Veeam and VMware, right? Just kind of some how-to videos from some of my popular blog posts. Like I see a blog mm -hmm. post is really popular on Veeamist.net. So I've tried to make a couple of videos to go along with it because I'll put screenshots in a blog post. I do tons of video on Orchestrator, um, Veeam One, some of my favorite features like Enterprise Manager, things like that. And to me, I'm trying to make these videos, one, because I know a lot of other people really like learning from videos. And two, I'm hoping if I make enough videos that I'll actually start enjoying them. And I am getting to the point where I actually like making them. Before, it used to be like this terrible troll. Oh, I'm going to make another video. This is going to be horrible. Like, I made one last week. I, I published on Tuesday for my DR test Tuesday for Orchestrator, right? And I was yeah. doing a bunch of videos for um, the Veeam Analyst Summit Action. I'm like, oh, I'm just going to pop out an Orchestrator video and do it. So I've definitely gotten more into the groove of it and I'm seeing cool. why people like it. Um, so my blog is vmist.net. I have lots of really cool how-to articles for VMware, Veeam stuff, a lot of Cisco stuff actually as well. Um, mm -hmm. I'm a big fan of the Cisco. And then I, I'm starting to put stuff on my YouTube channel as well to kind of correspond to some of that stuff. Cool. Excellent. Excellent. No, it, it's good stuff. Just so uh, everyone knows, I poke around there all the time. She's got a couple of hashtags that she does for, you know, uh, the Veeam One, what is that hashtag on Veeam One? Veeam One COTD, Veeam One Catch of the Day. So a lot of us on the product strategy team use that hashtag for cool Veeam One tips. Uh, mm -hmm. I do DR Test Tuesday now for Orchestrator, all about talking mm -hmm. about DR testing and how easy it can be with Orchestrator. Yeah. yeah, very, very nice. Okay, one final thought. If you are going to take a test this week, tell me all the things that are going to go through your head so as I'm you're I'm not a good test taker. Like I have like really serious oh, like, test awful, things that I be around, awful, right? But I know what works for me though. So tell me when you're kind of lining up your brain, what are you not thinking about and what are you focusing on? I'm like literally studying in the parking lot before I walk into the building back, okay. like, back when you could go to test things. So I'm pretty bad like that, but I have a lot of um, anxiety around it. Like I get really nervous about, oh, I got to take this test, whatever. Um, so I've tried to be like, well, okay, it's a test. Like if I don't pass it, I can just retake it. I mean, everything's got retake policies. I think it's usually like seven or 10 days or whatever. So mm -hmm. I've kind of developed this philosophy of, oh, I'll just go burn it. Like I'll just go, I think I'm kind of know what I'm doing. I'll just go take it. If I pass it, great. If not, I'll go, well, I'll go try it again. Gotcha. Maybe it's not the end of the world, right? It's just some certification test. No one cares how many times it took you to get it. Like you got it. 
Gotcha. Yeah, and that's very interesting because I think a lot of times, you know, because I I hate taking them. I do. I, I mean, from the time I started long ago when I did my Nobel C and E crap and all that stuff forever ago, you just walk in that room and all of a sudden you just go, Oh my God, I'm gonna throw up. Yeah. I just don't want to do this, you know? Well, it's kind of like intimidating. So I haven't done any of these. Um, So I know VMware and Cisco, I believe, are now letting you take all your tests from home in this remote proctored thing. Um, oh. First of all, I don't know how I feel about having someone stare at me on a webcam while I take a test. I haven't gotten that far yet. I haven't tried it. But right. I feel like that might be a little less anxiety inducing than having to go drive someplace, walk into mm. a building, get like frisked down and everything like that. So, um. <laughs> Where I, the I, hell are you taking tests at? <laughs> yeah, you can't bring anything in the room with you. They check your sleeves. I always wear stuff like this. They like make me pull up my sleeves and like check everything and all this other stuff. I don't, know, I don't like it. Um, so I think maybe if I can get my act together, I'll try to do one of those. Maybe for Cisco. Uh, yeah, I actually am in like taking one. one like I'm taking one before. a week from. Are you doing it in person or remote? Wednesday. No, I'm doing it here. Yeah, I'm doing okay, it what here. Test are you taking? Yeah. Let's shame you into a absolutely a VMCE 2020. Yeah, very I mean, nice, very nice. Yeah, but I'm taking. Well, it let out. me know how that whole remote thing goes. Maybe that'll be enough to kick me on the butt to try to do something. I don't know. Yeah, I'm kind of. So like, I personally, with all this stuff going on, I'd never go to a testing center anytime soon. And one of the tests I really want to take, they haven't gone online yet, so I like haven't even studied for. It. I've just been like, oh, throw that book in the corner. I'm not going anywhere. So. <laughs> I hear you loud and clear. Okay. Well, uh, again, Melissa, thank you so much. Always, for you're, you're always animated and you're always giving us good tips and tricks. But uh, uh, good luck with your examining and help that you may have shared with all these folks here to know that even the smart, smart, smart folks we have out there have that anxiety <laughs> going up before taking an exam. That's great stuff. I appreciate it so much. Thanks. We'll see you soon.